Okay. So let's see if we can finish this thing up today. We should be able to. I think last time we pretty much laid out all the controls. So we've got these circular controls over where the bones... We'll, we'll, we'll attach them to the bones, then we'll set up some set-driven key stuff today to make it, like, automatically work. Uh, so, the first thing we can go ahead and do, every time I, like, these computers have deep freeze on them, so they'll wipe your Maya settings, um, and usually what I'll do is go ahead and make the joint size a little bit bigger so it's easier to control and, like, move around. So we'll just go up to display, animation, joint size, and just crank that up. And then we can go ahead and start the attaching process of these controls. And the first thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and hide everything but the controls. So go ahead and go up to show. And again, you can pop that out by clicking the little bar at the top. And just go show none, and then it'll hide everything. And then at the very top, there's a little checkbox called NURBS Curves. And then we also have some locators. And that's all that we use for controls. And again, all I did here was went up to show, none. And you can pop the little show menu out. Shows right here to the left. And I just did show none, and you're going to check on NURBS curves and joints. Oh, no, not joints, sorry, locators. And what we're going to do is we have, we have some controls here that need to be angled and some of them that don't need to be angled. Like, for example, I can't tell if this one... that one doesn't really need to be angled. So the only ones that need to stay in their current angles are like these locators and let's see that thing probably or no that that's probably okay too. So I think actually the only things that need to stay in an angle are the locators. So you can actually turn off... Actually, let's keep on locators. All right, so this is what we're going to do. So select everything here. Select all the controls. And <clears throat> we're going to delete... Uh, we're going to delete... Delete by type history. Okay, so we're going to wipe the history. And then what we're going to do is... We would normally do transformations, but the problem is, is that if we do transformations, it's going to wipe away the uh, rotation info <clears throat> that we have here. And we don't want that. So we want to just, let's go ahead and select everything. We're going to go modify and the option box for freeze transformations. Okay. And you're going to uncheck Rotate and Scale. Actually, yeah, just uncheck Rotate and Scale, and then click Apply. Damn it. Yeah, click uh, uncheck Rotate and Scale, and then click Apply. because we want to keep our rotate and scale information on the locator joints. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and hide your locators by in the show hide window. And again, 
All we've done so far is selected all of our controls here, edit, delete by type history, modify, and the option box for freeze transformations, and then in here we've unchecked rotate and scale. So we want to keep our rotate and scale. So then you can, so we just translates, we're just clearing out the translates, and then you can uncheck locators and select all the controls again and then you can turn back on rotate and scale and hit apply so all of these circle controllers we can wipe all of the transformation data on translate rotate and scale but for the locators we wanted to keep it and the reason we wanted to keep it is because I want to keep the scale that I made these at and I also want to keep the angle that they're at so that if I go to double click my move tool options I can change it from axis orientation to object and I can move in the direction that I have it uh, angled here so that the arrow can move the way that it's supposed to move Anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is in order to make it so these animators can't adjust the scale or the rotates uh, on these items, we're gonna lock. We're gonna lock it because realistically. So we'll start with the arrow here. Okay, so the arrow only really needs to go this way. Uh, it doesn't need to, I mean, I guess it, I guess we don't need to lock, we don't need to scale the arrow, okay? So so go ahead and select the arrow control for the locator, for the arrow locator control. So again, you can show, you can show your polygons here if you want, or your joints, joints and polygons, you can just show all, it doesn't matter. And we want to select the locator here for the arrow. And what we're going to do is we're just going to lock and hide the scale the scale controls because we don't really want animators scaling this there's no point so if you shift select on the right hand side over here the channels you can right click on those so i just selected the i shift selected the scale channels on the right hand side so i just clicked scale x and then I shift select it to scale Z. And if you right click those, there's an option in here called uh, lock and hide selected. And what that does is it literally removes that option from the control. So if I, for example, so that was scale, so if I'm an animator and I click on this control and hit R, you'll see scale is grayed out. So it locks our animators from being able to scale that that control. How do you unlock it if you need to? So in order to unlock it, you have to go. It's kind of a process. Uh, you have to go into the. You have to go into the channel editor, which is in general editors, channel control. Then you have to select the the control. And there's a tab that's called locked, and you can see all of the ones that are locked here, and you can move those over to non-locked. It's a process, but animators typically won't go through that process. So just as a rigor, we need to like lock those things from them. Generally, they, you know, you just want to kind of keep them in their playpen. You know what I'm saying? Keep them in their little sandbox. All right, but we'll keep we'll keep rotate and we'll keep move because we got to use those. Say the arrow hits something and needs to like spin and rotate, or we'll keep those on there. All right, so the next thing that we need to uh, lock is going to be the um, this little this little lock back here. This other locator. It's like a little lock that unlocks the little thingy that turns the latch. Right, it's a locator. So this one only needs to move. Uh, just it just needs to move. 
So that one we can lock and hide the rotates uh, and scale. And you can also technically lock and hide visibility also. There's no reason why that needs to be on there. So this time shift all the rotates in the scale, right click, and um, lock and hide selected. And realistically, this thing only needs to move in one direction. Uh, well, two directions, X and or Y and Z. So you could lock the X if you wanted to, which would keep it from moving side to side. I'll just go ahead and do that too. Lock and hide selected. So you'll see as you move it, it moves in Y and Z. So all that we have showing here is Y and Z. The next thing that we want to lock and hide the controls for is the locator on the other side. And that one, again, same thing. We don't need it to rotate. We don't need it to scale. It's only going to move in Y and Z. It's the exact same thing. Shift select, shift select everything. Control select Y and Z. Or control click Y and Z. Right click lock and hide selected. So again, you can't rotate it, can't scale it, can't move it in X. You can only move it in Y and Z. You can't hide it either. Visibility is for hiding. So we only want this thing to be able to move exactly, move and rotate exactly how we want it. The, re the reason why we lock these controls like this is it because it keeps the animator from breaking the rig. Okay, like the last thing you want is like the animator like breaking the rig and then like coming to you and being like, hey, the rig's broken, like, and, and creating more work for you. So you, you just like try and kind of lock it down as much as you can. Um, so the next control is this back wheel here. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's let's do this little rotate latch thing here. I think Actually, we can do a, a couple controls here at one time. So, we want there's a couple controls here that all they do is rotate. They're never going to move. Okay? So, those controls would be the wheel controls. We can select all those. Shift select those. The main rotate control, or the aim control in the center here, the whatever that is. The handle on the side. The little latch, and then the back pulley. So basically, every single circle control except for the main control. So you can select all the circle controls except for the main circle control. And literally, we're going to lock and hide everything but rotates. Because these need to rotate. So you can lock and hide everything but the rotates. Whoops. Yep. And now some of these aren't going to be able to, like the wheels are only going to be able to rotate in X, so you can lock and hide the YZ. The pulley and the handle and the main aim control, again, same thing. Those are only going to be able to rotate in X. So you can lock and hide the YZ. The little latch control, that one. That's odd. Uh oh, I broke that one.
Yeah, so that one's going to rotate, I think, only in Y, but I broke it. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. So I accidentally wiped the transformations on this. So as you can see, it's angled this way, but the rotate is still, it's, since I wiped the rotate transformations on this, it, it's in world space. If you double click on your rotate tool and change the axis orientation to object as opposed to world, the, the rotate orientation is supposed to match the angle of this. You can fix that by going into component mode up at the top like under mesh and there's a little question mark on the icon shelf menu you can click that and um, if you have handles turned on you can then actually select the rotate pivot and you can rotate that to match the angle of the the angle of the control. This isn't like terribly important, but another thing that you can do in your rotate settings, if you double click your rotate tool amongst changing the axis orientation to object as opposed to world, is you can change it. There's a, something called step snap and you can turn that on to relative. So when you rotate something, it rotates with a snap to a degree. For example, I change it to 5, and then I can perfectly match, snap match this. I don't know if you guys are keeping up with me at all on this, but it's okay. So then I can go back into object mode, and now when I rotate this, it rotates based off of that uh, controls angle as opposed to... world space. Again, you guys can go back through this video and, uh, and watch how to do that again. Alright, so we've got all our controls here locked down pretty much, history wiped off of them, and transformations. So now we need to go through the process of actually connecting these controls to their bones. So you can hide everything Go to show, hide everything, and all you want to show is just the curves, locators, and joints. Curves, locators, and joints. And now we're pretty much going to do the same process over and over again here. Um, and if you go up to the rigging drop down in the upper left, change it from modeling to rigging, there's a, up at the top you'll see next to deform is something called constraint. You can pop that out. And we're mainly going to use, there's, there's uh, three different kinds of, well, there's multiple kinds of constraints here, I'll explain them all. Uh, there's a pull vector constraint, which is if something's out it's in space. Actually, pull vector constraints are used to connect IKs to like elbows and knees. Aim constraints are, for example, if you have a control out in space and you want to have an eye pointing at a control that you aim at it. Scale constraint just controls the scale channel Orient constraint controls the rotate channel. Point constraint controls translates. And parent constraints controls it all. Okay, so we can make our life easier just by using parent constraints, which we'll do now. Um, but if you want to get way more detailed, which we will in the future, we'll focus more on only translate and only orient. So let's go ahead and start here. Uh, we'll start with the arrow again. So go ahead and select the uh, arrow control. 
then shift select the arrow joint and then we're going to open up the option box for parent constraint. So again, select the arrow control, shift select the arrow joint, and then open up the option box for parent constraint. And we can just go ahead. There's a couple things we need to pay attention to here. Maintain offset is uh, is normally checked on if the control is offset from the bone and you want to keep that rotation or or translation or scale offset uh, if they're exactly in the same place and oriented the exact same way then you can turn off offset but I don't know if they are or not I don't want to take the time to figure that out so I'm just gonna select the Control, shift, select the arrow, and then hit apply. And when you hit apply, you'll see that the channels on the right hand side become light blue. And what that means is Maya is telling you that now if you move that arrow control, it also moves the arrow. Okay, so we'll do it for another controller here right below it. We've got the main rotate control for the for the entire bow. So again, we're just going to select the control, shift select the main bone there, and then hit apply. So now when you rotate that control, it moves the entire bone. So I'm just going to kind of go through here for each one of these controls and And do that. Um, let's save the wheels for last because those are going to be a little tricky. But I'll go to the back here, the back uh, rotator thing. I'll select that control first, bone second, apply. And you can test it. <coughs> Again, same for the bolt. Control first, bone second, apply. I'm just going to keep doing this over and over again with all my little controls here. Just make sure you attach the right control to the right bone. You can also do the main root bone down at the bottom. Yeah, curve first, then joint, and hit apply.
Okay. Um. We'll go ahead and do the wheels here. Uh, so what we want to do with the wheels is we want to open up our hypergraph hierarchy. So window, windows hypergraph hierarchy. And you can select both of the wheels. And in your hypergraph hierarchy, you can hit F, and it'll zoom to whatever controls you have selected. <clears throat> so what I want you to do is select both of the back wheels and group them. Control G. And uh, actually, scratch that. Let's uh, undo that. Control Z. Uh, what we want to do is go to group options. So go to edit group option box. And there's some settings in edit group option box for when you we want it to group as a parent, but we want the pivot to be at the center. So when you hit apply, it will now make the pivot point at the center of the wheels as opposed to the center of the grid. So do that for both wheels. So select both wheels and make sure we just hit apply. And as you can see in your hypergraph hierarchy, if you select any one of the wheels and you just hit F in your hypergraph hierarchy here, so Windows, hypergraph hierarchy, you can see that now each wheel, both sets of wheels are under a group. And what we want to do is instead of constraining, constraining the controls to the bone, we're going to constrain the group to the bone. So you select the group, shift select the bone, parent constraint. Select the group, shift select the bone, parent constraint. So the way that works is when it comes time to rotate the wheels, if you just select a wheel controller and rotate, nothing happens. You actually have to tap up on your like up arrow and it will select the group so if you select a wheel control just tap up and it'll select the group and then you can rotate the wheels so when you tap up it selects the group So that should be all the controls. So now you can turn everything back on. Oh. And uh, you can start playing with stuff. And you'll see when you start playing with stuff, it moves your objects. But we've got some problems. And we've got some problems. So when you constrain uh, controls to bones, especially when you're doing rotates and translates, it pretty much 
disables the other hierarchy. So for example, if you gra grab this, the main center aimer control here and try and rotate it, you'll see it only rotates the bow. See this? It only rotates the bow. And the reason it does that is because the bow or the arrow is constrained to this control and all the other little controls back here are constrained to the other bones that are attached. So what we need to do is we need to parent all of those extra little controls to the main aimer control. The way you can do that is you select, for example, I'll select the arrow, then shift select the main aimer and tap P. And that way when I rotate the main aimer, it also rotates the arrow. So I'll do the same thing for the little uh, crank back here. So I'll select that, then I'll shift select the main aimer and hit P. That way when I rotate the main aimer, it also rotates the crank. And I need to do the same thing for the other little, the other two locators back here and the little locking mechanism. So I can shift select all of those, then shift select the main aimer and hit P for parent. That when I, way when I rotate the main aimer, Should be rotating everything, but it's not. And that seems like a waiting issue. So it looks like we didn't wait that the way we wanted to wait it. So what we need to do here is we need to weight the main part of the crossbow here and the other little pieces. There's like, you can actually shift select them. I don't want to blow away any of our other weighting here. Basically, yeah, this, this will be real easy. So shift select the top part with the bolts in it. Shift select the main part. Oh, yeah, actually. It's not going to be as easy as I thought, but you can select. We can select these two: the main piece, and then the upper piece. And then you're just going to open your paint skin weights tools, and you're going to flood those to the center bolt. You're going to flood those to the center bolt. So then when you rotate that main con center bolt controller, it rotates those parts. And then you just have that long beam in the center that we need to now flood. But that's going to be tricky. But let me, if you guys just look up here, I can show you. Just look real quick. Let me show you. So as you can see, I didn't weight that piece in the center there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate all this stuff out of the way. Then I'm going to come in here, and there's a lot of moving parts in here. Well, actually, yeah, I can just select those. Double click my paint skin weights tool, center bolt, flood. They pop into place. Now I just have this beam, and the beam, I can just grab a chunk of vertices here and do my shift select greater than tool to get all of them. And then I'll double click the paint skin weights tool, flood those. And there's only one other little piece here. I can grab that and flood it. So now I can zero out in the channel channel box and now this main piece will rotate the entire crossbow. So again all I did was go back to my rigging tab here 
and selected these pieces that weren't moving when I rotated the main center bolt joint. And I just flooded that one, flooded that one, flooded. Oh no, did I break something? Ah. Uh, I broke something. So I've really broke this crossbow. Great. <laughs> it's incredibly broken. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now I just have to go back. It's only this piece here. So I just have to go back and do some waiting fixes. This is why we save incrementally. The good news is it's only a couple pieces, so I'll just select this piece, flood it. Select this piece. I'm just going to flood some pieces back here so they work. No, it's okay. I'll just. You guys know what to do, right? You're just fixing the weighting. Just make sure things work. They're weighted the way they're supposed to be weighted. Go to Windows, General Editors, Channel Control. So you guys know what you're supposed to be doing, right? You're just making sure that when you turn this wheel, it moves the freaking crossbow the way it's supposed to move it. And all you're doing, there was some waiting that was missed when we did it. So we're just going back through and fixing the waiting. And I was doing that, and I really broke everything. 
So I'm just going back here and just kind of fixing this one by one. It's a real pain in the butt. I'll fix it here and I'll put up the file so everybody can. So as long as you move your controls and they move everything that they're supposed to be moving, then you're in good shape. Anybody, did I lose anybody? Because I almost lost myself here. Does anybody need any help? I think luckily I was showing you guys and you weren't working along with me. Screwed yours up too? Alright. I'll put up the my file here. Just make it easy. you want to do that? Because <coughs> it's off-center. It's off-center? Yeah. Um, yes, if you have something constrained and you want to unconstrain it, I'll show you how to do that, okay? <coughs> Select the thing you have constrained. So for example, this backbone here, it's constrained. I can see it's light blue over here. So what you do is you can go to Windows Hypergraph Hierarchy with it selected and hit F in the Hypergraph Hierarchy and you can see the constraint here in the hierarchy. So you can just select it and delete it. So it would be the one under the bone. So then you can snap your control back to your bone and reconstrain it. So I, my bad, I probably lost most of you guys on that thing, so here, oops, get the tiny arrow. I fixed the file, so if you would like it, it's right here. If you just drop that one in your folder with the textures, it should open right up.
so so far we've constrained we've got our main aimer here we've got our arrow that moves we've got our rotate wheel back here all of our latches the bolt the crank Like this? Uh, oh, yeah. looks like there's a problem there. Um, you double click your move tool over here on the left, yeah. and there's axis orientation drop down. Change that to object as opposed to world. Uh -oh. And if I move the arrow out of the way, for you, those of you guys that grabbed my file, there's a piece that needs to be re. The weighting needs to be fixed here. I'm just going to select a vertex on that, hold shift, click greater than a couple times to select that piece, and then I'll uh, flood that to the center bolt. It's like the cap on the front of the bow, which is kind of hanging out in space. See, as you go through the process of like adding controls and things, you can find weighting that you didn't you didn't fix. You didn't fix properly. So again, when you rotate the main control here, it should rotate the whole crossbow. And we also need to We also need to parent the groups of the wheels to the main root control. So if you select one of each wheel control and tap up, it'll select both groups. And then you can shift select the main root control and hit P. That way when you rotate the main group control it rotates all of the wheels and then as you can see we also need to parent the main rotate control <coughs> and the back uh, pulley control to the root also so you'll select the main control shift select the root hit P and select the main pulley control and select the root and hit P. So when you rotate that root control it's going to control the all the main controls will be parented to the root control. And this little bolt back here somehow got the weighting on it got blown away, so I'm just going to flood that to the root. Oh, crap. Can't win here with this weighting. So I just noticed that that was attached to the main cylinder here, so I'm going to have to select that cylinder individually and then flood that this thing is just really I don't know what the modeler was doing but they like broke this thing into a million pieces that cylinder I will flood to pulley. But I mean as you go through here, I mean you guys have done all this stuff before. 
I mean, all, we're doing the same things over and over again. We're just making sure that the controls are constrained to the bones and the bones are skinned or that the objects are skinned to the right bones. If you move a control and it moves a bone which moves an object and it's not moving the right stuff, that needs to be fixed. Like here's another problem. Just as I rotate this thingy, some bolts on the left hand side kind of fly out in space. I don't even know what those are. <coughs> It's just little things. This other piece, pieces from the bolt are broken, so I have to flood those. So basically go through and just move all your controls and they should move joints and when they move joints they should move skinned objects and you just want to make sure that they're moving the right skinned objects. If they're not moving the right skinned objects then you need to fix the weighting. And the root should drive all the controls to rotate this thing like this. You should be able to grab that big circle at the bottom and it should rotate the whole unit. Yes? Again, which which one? Um, the one where the Are you talking about this one here? Yes. Okay. So when you select it, see how mine rotates <laughs> on its axis. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to fix, right? Yes. Okay. So first of all, you're you're rotating by your axis orientation is by object, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is what I would do. Um, hide your polygons. So go up to show turn off polygons. Okay, so when you select it, what you're seeing is the rotator is not even like this, right? Right. All right, so come up here, look where my mouse is, click on object mode. I mean, uh, component mode. And there's a little 
uh, question mark over here on the right called select miscellaneous components. I want to see that. Right? Uh, there's a okay. So there's like a little arrow. There's like a little arrow next to component mode. If you click it, it'll expand the menu. Let's see the question mark now. So next to component mode, there's a okay, little yeah. line. Okay, so click the question mark. Now go to show and turn on handles. Now you'll you'll see the little thingy. So now you can select that. That is the rotate pivot. You can select that, and now on the on the left hand side in your move control, change your step snap to relative. And change the change the number to five, and now you can rotate that, and it will snap to five degree increments, and you can match it to the angle of your control. Make sense? And when you're finished, click Object Mode, and now when you select that control it will default to the proper angle. A lot of complicated, but that's rigging. Uh, so another thing I noticed here, you guys, is when I rotated my bow, the top of the bow pieces are like, they pop out of their area where they're supposed to be bolted in. So those actually need to be weighted to the center bolt. So I just rotated those out and I'm going to just select some of the vertices here and flood those to the center bolt so that they stay where they're supposed to stay. And I'll just keep flooding those piece by piece here until they look like they're supposed to look. And uh, I'll show you guys something here. So I've like 100% flooded these pieces to the center bolt. And then from here down are weighted to these joints. So I want this, this little piece here to blend a little bit more in between. So 50% to the center bolt, 50% to this joint here, which is eye elbow. So I'm just going to select these verts, and in my paint skin weights tool, I'm going to change the value to 0.5, and then I'm going to flood 0.5 of that to elbow. 
So that's like 50% to the center bolt and 50% to the elbow. So it just blends a little bit more. So you, instead of flooding stuff 100% to each bone, you can blend it between bones in whatever increment you want. So you can give something like, give one bone 75% of the weighting and the other bone 25%, or give them 50-50, or you can really, really get into your blending. So now those pieces stay put when I bend the air or the uh, bow here that are supposed to be bolted in there. thing is a lot of work to get to work right but so it's 152 let's go ahead and take like a 10 minute break and we'll come back and do finish make the final touches on this and I'll put the file up
I was trying to help the team and not myself. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I mainly do solo. Uh, I can't help them. I get mad when the Mercy revives and go like this. I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it. My aim is terrible. Don't bother. No, it's it's that you need to heal the tank, not revive me. Is it quiet moment? Or is there a lot of healing life? Is that extra person? Yeah. Revive the tank. Revive the tank. You can't do damage. Unless it's Roadhog. Neither can I. Because Roadhog can do damage. You should see me play Roadhog. Like, dude, if they have, like, good characters, they can just kill me right after I'm revived. I really must be able to play I'm just trying to kill this all the way to the next spot, then I've got I like the, uh, the animation. I really like the animation. I do. I don't think it really would have changed something else. No, it's better. Well, you didn't get to the game to a claw era. Oh, right next to the repair. Like, get over No, like, <laughs> like how Widowmaker's <laughs> grapple hook can't work. No, that, they'll never copy ability or I'm going, really? No, I'm going to go. No, they'll often, what I saw was a good idea, is beat Scatter Arrow, but don't make it where it bounces off walls. Make it to where it's like, bang! Instantly. So you'd have to be up close to the person to use it, and it's still super damaging, so you could tread shield your tanks with that, but you can't. One shot someone from across the map with a shitty scatter arrow. You'd have to be in their face to do it. Yeah, I don't random scatter. So I like that. I don't randomly use scatter arrow. I do. I just like aim. Dook. Wait five seconds. You kill tracer. <laughs> I don't do that. I, I don't like doing that. Are you kidding? I've done that so many times. I'll go straight to the front of the enemy spawn, look them dead in the eye, start shooting arrows into the sky, and then I'll back up. And I yeah. sat down, jump, jump. and the yeah. first person that came out to kill me jump, jump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> died instantly. We could probably make this the next season. Of course, I died really uh, quickly after that, but I felt good about like myself. I don't um, do that. Um, like, it really just depends like, whether I want to be a sniper on the boat, or I want to be so in your face on the boat. It so really just depends on the floor of the game for me at that point. My two must play heroes is in order on the boat. Mine, mine goes from Hanzo to Genji to Zombra to Luffy. Yeah. Weave. Hanzo to Genji. Yeah. You freaking weave. Yeah. You console. Yeah. Yeah. You're a console. Getting one or two yeah. of those made and then like two regular. On one hand, I wish it was cross platform. And on the other hand, I know it's been better not to make this PC and phone my own console so I really do. I would have loved the sound. Because then they would have to not because more of the sound. Because, because then the ranking would make more sense. Yeah, all the consoles would be in bronze. Yeah. Well, every PC is master race. I'd at least do box build with our PC master race over here. I'd, 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 if, if it was crossplay, I would still be where I am right now. Silver. You're silver? Yeah. I'd still be silver regardless. It, it I have not matter. I don't play ranked. The only reason I play ranked at all is so I can get those points for gold gun. So I've only ever placed and I place at my level. Oh, one second. If I even, if I try to change it to diamond the same day, that one no left is just that bad. One or the other. Let's play. I'm an aggressive player. I am too. I see a lot of people, like, there's a dude in my special effects class that I work with. He plays Overwatch whenever we're not working. He's next to me, so I don't think he has to be that much. I see him and he's like, he plays, he plays a lot of the trees, but he like, he can't aim. And I'm like, do you know what you do, you do in order so that this is size you can't aim problem? If you get to the point where you don't need to aim, you get in their face, you throw a flashbang and say, stand in front of still. <laughs> What's up? That's what the mainly do to me. Because I can't aim. Well, I can aim better now. Okay. Yep, so the same thing. I mainly have that problem only when I'm getting, but it doesn't matter because if I'm lucky, I will have the flash up before they shoot their flash. So they shoot their flash thing and it just goes right back at Turn on handles. 
handles. No, show handles. The little, the little question mark up at the top. So what's the problem? My favorite thing, when I first started playing Overwatch, like even when I first touched it, you could like, I didn't play it for like two years after it came out. So I didn't like yep. get that into it. Yep. But when it first came out, yeah, seeing your movement controls up there, is it based off of world or object? You just need to change it to object. So you already had it right. Does that make sense? It moves based off the object, not the world. Make sense? So world is just north, south, east, west, and Z. Make sense? Oh. Just a checkbox, man. Something in my mind. 
I turn around instantaneously and immediately start reflecting on <coughs> the little maker who was aimed at me. I don't know if this was Because I, I, I thought to myself, where's the widow maker? <laughs> I look over, start reflecting, I don't even know, find her, have half a second to aim her at her head, reflect and kill her, and I go back to kill her. There's no guess you for that. It's weird. I've done that before, like but it's like really hard to tie it up. Because yeah. it doesn't I, register I so often as a Widowmaker yeah. aiming at me, and I'm purposely baiting her right. shots, yeah. and then I start standing still because I know she's aiming at my head. I start reflecting, and I aim her bullet towards her healer. Bam, shot. Sorry, Lucy. That's great. Yeah. If you can aim the deflect, where you want to put it, you just bam, shoot the mercy. Even though, well, even though I can be really good because I still um, haven't freaking got his trophy, although I'm not great at this. I'm just I'm trying to find like balls and so I often do. I, I would never play D&D. Like that's that's where I got the seven wins. Yeah. Yeah. In competitive, yeah. uh, let's avoid round shape. Like what's called the capsule shape thing? It's called the area until you get to 100 percent. That's literally what I was doing. If you want to you know, very basic poly so that's where like the fishbowl I'm asking Kale that it was just start up yeah. Oh hold on, and I'll show you just a couple things that I like right before I get started. Mm-hmm. Fun. Mm-hmm. 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 You can also just try it out and see if you have it. It's great. Though my sensitivity might be a little low. Because, like, we need to save the money. Processing power is possible. Processing power is possible. Processing power is possible. For it to execute down to the process. The cursor will be done with the issue. Oh, that's part of the delay. When I have my finger processing. In order to turn my character around, I can go down to the desk. All the way across the desk. They're both working on it. I'm assuming it's going to work like Minecraft. So you can draw this how you want to. Soldiers are also one of my favorite characters. I, I like generic Call of Duty, man. <laughs> I like to be Call of Duty. <laughs> like in this game of all these diverse characters, you could just play Call of Duty, man. <laughs> hey, you guys, let's uh, let's 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 finish this up. When I'm Genji, I love it when he activates his. His ult. I love it when Soul activates his, his ult when I'm getting it. Because that means he's perfectly shooting at me and he can't avoid it. Not when I'm like two feet away. I will just sprint in front of you until you're shooting at I've done it so many times. And I'm faster than you, so I can stay in front of you. Alright. Hey, Regan, guys, let's, uh, let's finish this up. Um, so I put the file up here. If anybody wants to download the most recent file, I'll put it on the board. Uh, I want to show you guys something. So what we're about to do here is uh, we're going to set up what's called a set-driven key to where an animator can come in here and automatically... Uh, just use one channel here. I've created this channel called load. It should be called load fire actually And uh, I'm going to show you how to set that up But basically what it is is with my controls here. This is how an animator would be looking at our uh, Ballista here um, And one of the things that we need to be able to load and fire this thing So I've set it up to where it automatically works. So if I select the main control here I've created a new channel called load and if you watch as I I can middle mouse drag and as I middle mouse drag it automatically uh, pulls the pulley 
uh, pulls the arrow back and then uh, bends the bow and then also when the arrow gets back to the or the bolt gets back to where it's supposed to be it automatically latches so all of this works with one control automatically so I'm going to show you how to set all that up so I could literally as an animator I can come in here grab one control click my uh, attribute and just do one motion and it will load back and then I can fire it and then I can grab my uh, locator control here and continue to animate the arrow going wherever it needs to go okay so I'm gonna open up my file before I did all this stuff Double check, okay. Alright, so the tool that we're going to use to do this is called Set Driven Key. And it's a little complicated, but uh, when you figure it out, it, it makes a lot of sense. And we'll go one at a time here. Uh, so go change your uh, drop down at the top to animation. And go ahead and just show all for right now. And what we're going to do is go up to key, set driven key set. It's called key set driven key set. And basically the way this works is that you have a driver and you have things that are driven. Okay. Typically in this case, you have a control which has a channel on it, which is the driver. And then you have things that are driven, which is the pulley, the arrow, the locking mechanism, um, the bow. All those things are driven by one control. So you have driver and driven, OK? Uh, so what we need to do is first let Maya know uh, what our driver is. And our driver is going to be the main control here. So if I click on my main control here and do load driver, uh, you can see main up here. And now you have all of the attributes or channels of that driver. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our own attribute okay, that fits in here uh, called load fire. Okay? Uh, so to do that, you go up to modify, add attribute. So we're going to add attribute on that control, and we're going to call it load fire. And the only other thing that we're going to do is we're going to give it, down where it says numeric attribute properties, we're going to give it a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10. OK, so again, we've gone to modify, add attribute. And we're going to give it, we're going to call it load fire, and then we're going to give it a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 10. Okay? And then you can go ahead and click OK. And it does not like my naming convention. So I'll just call it load fire. Doesn't like that either. I'll call it load fire. Okay, it likes that. All right. So now if I load that driver again, I can now see my new attribute at the bottom called load fire. Okay? So I can select that load fire attribute and now I'm good to go on my driver. Okay? Now that load fire control and attribute are going to control I'm going to select the things that it's going to control here. So the first thing is going to be this pulley. And then I'm going to shift select the lever. Then the, then the bolts and the locks, and then the arrow. And then I can go load driven, and it will pull all of those items in as driven. Okay? So I'm going to start with those. I'll do the bow last. 
All right, so let's go ahead and learn how to do this real quick. All right, so we'll start with something simple like the pulley, okay? So what we want to do is start off and select in your driven, select main pulley. So now my driver is selected and my, my thing that I want to drive, the driven, is also selected. And now you want to select the channel that you want it to affect, which is over here. Mine is just one rotate. Yours may be multiple rotates. Make sure you select them all. Rotate X is really what we want to select. Okay. Now in Maya, if I select my main control, in the channel box over here, you'll see load fire is on frame zero, or it has a value of zero, sorry. So what we're gonna do is at zero here, in our set driven key, you're gonna click key. So that set a key for load fire at a value of zero. You make sure you key that. Now we're gonna change load fire to 10 Now we'll select our pulley here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate our pulley. Just, we'll rotate it to about, I don't know, 350 degrees. Okay, just rotate it so it rotates a little bit, and then click key again. So what we've done is we've rotated the pulley and keyed it on load fires value of 10. So now if I select my main control, shift select load fire over here in the channel box, and then middle mouse drag in Maya, it's going to rotate the pulley from value 0 to 10 in however much I rotated it. So again, in order to do that, you select the main control, select the load fire attribute over here, and then middle mouse drag inside of Maya, and it will rotate the pulley. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that one again, but I'm gonna continue with the other parts here. So if you didn't follow along, that's okay. You can always go back and, and do this one. So select your main root control, set load fire again to zero. Okay, you always want to start at zero here. All right, so we'll do something a little bit easier here. Um, or actually, sorry, a little bit more complicated. What we're gonna do is select the arrow control and select the bolt control. And we're gonna move those all the way up to where the rope is straight. We're going to move those all the way up to where the rope is straight. So this would be the point where someone would load in an arrow, okay? Gonna move those all the way up to the tip to where the low the the thing is straight. Now, if you're having trouble moving along an angle, double click your move tool and set your axis orientation to object instead of world. That will allow you to move it along an angle. All right. So again, I've selected both of those, the bolt and the arrow, and I've moved them all the way up to where the the rope is straight here. All right. Okay, so the first things first, let's go ahead and select the, what is this one called? Arrow. How come that's not loaded in there? Jeez. Oh, okay. Uh, so select the arrow control here in driven then we're gonna shift select uh, translate XYZ 
because we want those to be affected and then go ahead and click key then do the same thing for the bolt click the bolt select all the translates and click key so when you're driven select all the translates for arrow and key it select all the translates for bow and key it then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the arrow and the bow and the bolt back down to where it's ready to fire and you want to pull it back down to where it uh, matches where the lock is supposed to lock it then you'll grab your main control set load fire value to 10 and then you'll key both of those items again so I'll click the arrow, click the translates, key it, click the bolt and the translates and key it. Oh crap. When I set the value to 10 for load fire, those things popped back up into place. So I'll just have to pull them right back down again and then key it. So now when you select your main control, select your load fire attribute, middle mouse drag in Maya, the pulley is now pulling and the arrow and the bolt are now coming back. So we have the majority of this now working. So again, if you weren't able to keep up, don't worry. I'm going to continue to do, we're doing the same thing over and over again here. We're just making more pieces work the way that they're supposed to work. And so you can, you can catch back up. We'll just go, we'll do the uh, locking mechanism here next. All right. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is as the, uh, arrow pulls back here with our load fire attribute we want that locking mechanism to unlock from value 9 to 10 okay so I'm gonna set my uh, value here well, we'll set it at 10 we'll keep yeah set it to 10 and then you want to click on the bolt uh, main and release and key those in place locked at 10 so select the attributes and key them select the attributes key them and select the attributes and key them then what you'll do is you'll change the load fire value to 9 and then you'll rotate these things into place to their unlocked position and the little lock you'll have to move back and then you go through and key them we'll key So then when you middle mouse drag on your uh, bolt here that pulls back, when you get to frame 9 and 10, the lever will auto lock. I kind of want that handle to spin a little bit more so I'm just gonna 
go back to my frame 9 here and uh, I'm just going to rotate that handle just a little bit more and then I'll find it and then key it so now the handle rotates a little bit more it looks like it takes a little bit more action to rotate that handle So again, this is a little tricky, but it creates like this automated system for moving a bunch of stuff. This is more of like a, this is, this is definitely a rigging thing. All right, so now let's do the bow. Uh, the bow should be pretty easy. We'll do it all separate. So set your load fire to zero. And if you haven't been able to keep up at this point, that's fine. The bow is going to be a completely separate thing, so you can totally do this on its own. You don't have to worry about it. It's not, none of these things are connected to each other, so you can always go back and fix them. Uh, so set your load fire to zero. And uh, you're going to select all the joints except for the tip joints in the bow. So hold shift and select all the joints and load those as driven. So again, I selected all the joints here except for the tip joints. Shift select them and load those as driven. So this is going to be very easy. So with those selected, as I pull them back, where the hell did my string go? Oh. So right now the arrow is about to be loaded, so the bow's in its good position so I'm going to shift select them all in driven and I'm going to shift select all the rotates and hit key so I'm going to key all those bones at the same time key all the rotates for all those bones at the same time with my load fire value at zero so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my load fire value to 10 and then I will bend back all these bones and key them in a bent back position. So now I rotate them backwards, make sure they're all selected and driven, and then hit key. It's that easy. So then when I middle mouse drag on my low fi load fire, it now will bend the bones for the bow backwards as well as rotate the pulley, as well as pull the arrow back and the bolt, and then lock in place when it reaches its farthest back area. And that's it for that. There's no more pieces that we need to actually auto move here. Um, and we can create as many attributes as we want. We could create like, you know, wheels turning. You could create, you know, aiming. You can create as, as much stuff as you want. Uh, so the last thing that we'll do here is we're going to set this up to where it's ready for an animator to come in and animate on the file without breaking everything. Okay, so right now it's kind of in rigging mode here. We can select the joints, we can select the controls, you can select the object. An animator could really come in here and break this thing. So what we need to do is we need to create some layers and put our controls, our bones, and, and certain things on certain layers so that the animator is only able to grab what they need to grab in order to get their job done. Nothing more. All right. So down here in the uh, layer section there is a create new layer button we're gonna create three layers one two three and then if you double click on those layers one of them we're gonna call objects and you can change it to a color the other one we're gonna call bone um, hidden And then the last one we'll call controls. 
Okay, in controls, you want to be like a really loud, bright color. So, for example, lime green. Okay. And now all we're going to do is we're going to select all the joints, and you can right-click on a layer, for example, hidden, and then add selected objects to that layer. And then you can click the V on that layer to hide the visibility. Uh, now I'm going to hide my curves and select all the objects. I'm going to hide the locators too. And I'm going to add the objects to the objects one. And then to the right of the P is a little empty box. And if I click that twice to what's called R, it allows me to see the object but not grab it. And now I'll turn on my controls and locators and I'll select those. And I'm going to add those to controls. And now they're lime green. And I'll increment and save this. So now an animator can come in here and can't grab the object, can't grab any bones. They can only grab controls, which are very visible uh, to see. So if an animator opens this file and sees this, it's very, very easy for them to see what they can work with and what they can't work with. Now they come over here and start messing with layers. It's obviously going to break some stuff. And I don't know if you can hide layers or whatever, but... Anyway, at least you've gone you've you've taken some steps here to make sure that they can't break anything. And that's it. This thing's ready for animation.